All right, hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something very exciting, at least something I am very personally excited for. This is Meng's 135th scale H64D Apache Longbow. Recently we've seen a lot of Apaches come out, to say the least. First out was TACOM with their H64D and E, as well as a World Apache boxing followed by the AH-64 uh, that is used by the Israeli Air Force, the Saraf, and now we have this one. So Meng's kit, obviously 135th scale, perfect scale for this helicopter. Um, we are going to go as we usually do. We'll take a look in the box. I have looked in here, as you can see, it took a little bit of an impact while shipping here from China. Everything inside is okay, but this is not the first time I've looked in the box. So we're going to open this, take a look at everything, and then we'll go sprue by sprue, and then we'll do a little comparison just very, very quickly looking at part A, part B of some parts that I can find from the guard or from the uh, TACOM kit compared with the parts, the same parts in this kit. So give me a second, we'll look in the box, and then we'll be right back. Right, so upon opening the box, this is what you see. This is normally on the bottom, and then this flyer is on top. But as I said, I have looked through here to make sure that nothing was broken from the impact it took. So this is a little out of order. But you get this flyer, you get this little baggie with the instruction manual and a painting guide and some other uh, documentation here. This is a hefty little bag here. Want to see what's in here? We'll get this out of the way first. So you get this stuff. Then you get various sprues here. I'm not going to go through all of them immediately. I'm going to get them out of these plastic bags and then we'll take a look at them one by one. Okay, and we're back. So I've got some of the pieces here. These are the ones that came kind of individually bagged. The fuselage halves, the little sponsons, this piece, that piece, clear sprue. Full disclosure, I did chop these off this uh, canopy piece was a little bit loose on here. I didn't want it to tear itself off and leave a giant gouge. So I chopped these off. They were all attached on here. It was fine. Just the one was a little loose, but we'll cover those in a minute. So this is what you get in the bag of instructions. So here we have obviously the instruction manual plus some pages of paperwork here, including some kind of a blurb in multiple languages. <clears throat> you have Chinese, English, as well as Japanese and Russian at the bottom right there. But these are some sort of like info cards about the Apache. We're not going to go through these right now, but you can read through those when you get your kit. Or here, what I'll do is I will do this and you can pause if needed. Okay, so put those to the side, and then these are the paint guides. We'll take a look at those in a second, but we'll look at the instructions first. I obviously won't go through the whole thing, but very nice little colored booklet. I haven't gotten any of Ming's recent kits, none of their aircraft kits. I don't have any of them. So this is a very nice surprise to me. I've also seen that they have, so in here, straight in. Have a little bit of information some safety tools required pretty straightforward stuff straight in you have three options here abc obviously pay attention to whichever one you're going to be building and this is particularly nice it has obviously the 3d build sequence plus color callouts right there the assembly is done in these sort of uh, cad-esque drawings a little bit of uh info there showing the angle of things that you have to add in the cockpit, make sure you get this correct. And as we go again, armored seats going in, consoles, instrument panels, sticks. Yeah. Then building up some interior components of the rotor head shaft. 
and I think I skipped a couple pages here, but it's all right. You obviously have full engines, all of this, the Sponsons going in. We won't spend too much time on this as it is a 135th scale Apache. It's nothing terribly crazy that we haven't seen before. Engines, exhausts. It does not come with the upturned exhaust, unfortunately. It just has these original ones to connect to the engine in that pan. More engine details, engine cowling and housing going on. It includes a mask set that we'll take a look at. This is very nice, actually. Then some stuff about the canopy, adding the armored, um, or maybe that, that divider in the middle. This stuff. Adding the crew weapons. Canopy open or closed. And then more details to close up around the rotor assembly. That nose mounted sensor assembly going together. Adding more details around windshield wipers, landing gear, wheels, all of that. Main gun. Undoubtedly, I think. Uh, Simone in Italy may be upgrading his parts for this, so keep a lookout for that on Facebook. Tail wheel, tail. Adding in some other open bays options, little detail parts, some of these little fuselage details getting added on, hand holds, that towel rack antenna. And then building pylons and ordnance, get rocket launcher, hellfires, obviously. This is kind of cool. Um, oh, you get a stinger. It's kind of cool. Hellfire rack. Adding the ordnance onto the pylons. And then if you choose to, having that big distinctive longbow radar on the top of the rotor, building that up. And then options for rotor blades. So you get a folded and a non-folded option. So this is obviously the the open option right here. Open option right there. If you choose to fold it, you have to do a little bit of modification, drilling out. Then comes with the FOD covers, the rack for the blades to stow into, and then adding the blades. Now it looks like these are pinned. I don't know if you'd be able to build the folded option and then have the blade spin open. We'll have to see. I'm not too sure on that. Tail rotor. Yeah. Last two pages are a parts map. There you can see those masks. It comes with them some photo etch as well. Paint callouts using AK paints, and I believe those are Gunsy acrylics, some variant, but yeah, that's the instructions. So there's that. Now these are pretty big foldouts, so we're not gonna open the whole, th or we'll, we'll open it and take a look. So this is not gonna fit in frame, obviously, but these are pretty much full four view or two view drawings of all the options. So obviously stencil placements, color callouts, pretty standard here, nothing too crazy. Yeah, so this is the common markings for all the stencils. This is the one for the actual individual options. Uh, you have obviously United States Army in, this one's in Mosul, Iraq. This is in, also in Iraq, and then Last option is actually a Japanese ground self-defense force option. This is actually kind of cool option with the tritone camo. And then obviously some ordnance down here. All right, so we're gonna clear this paperwork out of the way and then we'll take a look at parts. Be right back. Just kidding, I lied to you. Uh, before we take a look at parts, we'll take a look at this because I'm going to put it away and have it not be in the way. So this is another separate bag. I've cut the end off of it. It comes stapled. I didn't want it to 
uh, scratch the decals or scratch myself or lose the staples and step on them. So we'll take everything out of here. This is the, drop that. So these are the decals, obviously. Uh, print by Cartograph in Italy, copyright 2023 Ming. This is an August release, so this is literally fresh off the press. This is the decals for, I believe these are the sort of standard decals. Obviously you have the instrument panels right there for the consoles, screens, all that. Stencil detail. We'll do a little bit of a small flyby here so you can see all of it. Text is very much readable, except on those little white ones right there, but these down here are pretty much all readable. Warning triangles, some do not grabs. Obviously some of these are done as kind of just creative white blobs, but they'll help to break up the otherwise monotonous olive drab, or, or helo drab, I should say. These are some specific options. Obviously you have that yellow. This is for the Japanese option. The Japanese option actually has Japanese stencils, which is interesting. I've, it's good that they went through the trouble of doing that. You can see the Japanese rescue markings there. And then some more, I believe those are markings for the Hellfires, the rocket pods. Stuff like that. So decals right there. Let me put that back on the top and not lose that. This is particularly nice. I would like to see more kits start to include this. These are pre-cut. They feel like uh, kabuki tape or Edward masking material, Tamiya masking material, that are on this little sort of transfer sheet. And then they're laid out perfectly. All I need to do is peel them off and apply them. Uh, no comment on how they fit, but this, this is a really nice addition. I would like to see more people do this. And finally, this is a little sheet of photo etch right here. Obviously you have some like little detail pieces for the airframe that we saw. These are the, the veins or something that go on top of the engine housing. But yeah, this is not super thin. It's not, it's not super flexible. So you're not gonna really break this, uh, but most of these pieces I think remain straight, so that's actually good news for you. All right, now we're gonna clean this out of the way and we'll get to the parts. All right, back with parts. So we'll take a look at the biggest parts first and undoubtedly the most significant parts. This would be obviously the fuselage halves. They come in one bag and they actually um, are kind of friction fit together actually pretty tightly. So. You get two of these in a bag. There's only a little bit of sprue to clean up here. There's some like little attachment points along the top that have to be cleaned down, but we'll just take a look at one of these. Not really necessary to look at both. So I'll do a quick close up under the camera in the light so you can see all the molded details. Obviously there's raised and some recessed details here. Recessed for the paneling, raised for the rivets and hinges but everything is sharp. There is no sign of any flash on this. Everything is very nicely molded. You can see all those rivets. I'll turn a little bit so you can get a nice good view of it. And we're not gonna comment much on accuracy in this review, mainly because I'm not an Apache expert, but I do know an Apache expert. Maybe we'll get him to comment. If you want to hear his take on the other Apache kit, check out the other Apache video on the channel, but maybe we'll get him get his take on this one compared with that one. But this is a fuselage half, the inside, not much to really speak of, a lot of reinforcement back here. Always love that Meng has these very large attachment points. They do make test fitting tricky sometimes, but once you get these attached and glued together, like these beefy like tab receptacles here, this thing is going to be solid. Not much to speak of in here, but you're going to be adding the cockpit in here, obviously. But this is obviously Meng 2023. And then take a look at the other half. The other half is not much different. The inside is obviously the same, just the opposite half. Again, these are the 
I guess the holes for these other tabs to fit into, very large, very solid. You can see all that reinforcement back there. Once this is glued together, it's gonna be a solid thing. Again, raised details all over the place on this. Nice large lugs for attaching the sponsons. Nice large uh, slot for the, the stub wing. Molded details in there. Nice raised paneling, raised hinges and knobs and all manner of stiffeners and such like that. So that's a few slosh halves. Those out of the way. All right. And then we'll take a look at these pieces. So these are the, I guess, the sponsons that fit along the sides. So obviously in similar fashion as the fuselage halves, we'll take a quick look, quick flyby, a lot of raised rivets on here. Something that probably Kitty Hawk could take a little note from on their helicopter kits or whoever does a new family of retooled Blackhawks and Seahawks. Yeah, there is a detail piece that fits in here with all the avionics, greeblies and such, but not much to speak of here. Same on the other side. Again, nice molding, raised rivets, raised hinges, different size rivets too. So not just one size rivet for everything, bigger rivets here, and then smaller rivets along like the edges and such like that. So yeah, another detail piece fits in here. These are a couple other pieces that came separately. This, I'm not entirely sure what this is. This looks like a sensor holder of some kind that fits potentially into the wing. But again, on this, raised rivets, different size rivets, stiffeners, all that. Get a good look at that for you. And then this is like the belly pan piece, molded as one piece. This, this just slots in, I think. But again, raised paneling and rivets on this as well. And then this is the clear sprue. Uh, we'll take a look at the canopy parts in a second as I chopped them off. I didn't want them to break. So on here you have lenses for the Hellfires, potentially some little uh, like glass viewing ports or something for the fuselage. This is for that nose sensor. This is that kind of partition between the front and rear cockpits. Again, very nicely molded, super, super clear. No distortion at all. You can catch my hand through that. Yeah, it's a clear sprue. Take a look at the canopy piece, which I did chop off. It was a little loose in the kit, but I didn't want to wait for it to break off. So yeah, that's a little piece of dust right there. Okay, but again, super clear. Kind of a complex shape on the side. It's a little bit of a bubble, but everything I mean, you can catch my hand through there. A little bit of distortion, but that's to be expected. The top piece, which is a flat piece, is perfectly clear. And then on here also, there are raised rivet details as well. And then these are the two, I guess, hinged and opening pieces. Not much to speak of here, again, no distortion. I chopped these off because they have a sprue attachment point that I didn't want it to rip off and take a gouge out of it. But very nice. And then let's drop that one. This is the other. This is the rear hinge piece. Not much to speak of. Very nice. Right there. I believe uh, Main gives you masks for both the inside and the outside. So if you do choose to have this open, you can have the you, you can paint the actual inside of the piece without having to paint this black and then paint the outside color on it. It'll look a little bit nicer that way. So props to Ming for that. Okay, so that's the pieces that came individually bagged and I got out of the way. Next, we're going to take a look at the actual sprues. And there's a small pile of them off to the left here. Um, I'm going to reorganize them a little bit. We'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. So we'll look at these sprues kind of in the order that I took them out of the box just because some of them are duplicates in bags and some of them are like the C sprues in the same bag as the G sprue. So to put them back in order and then have to reorganize them is gonna be a nightmare. So we're gonna look at E sprue first and then we'll just go as we have them piled off over here. So E sprue, obviously some engine parts, you have the cowlings, the hatches. This is, I believe the top of the fuselage that 
uh, is kind of surrounds the rotor assembly. This is obviously the intakes for the engines and then some other cowling detail pieces. We'll do a quick little flyby of these for you guys to take a look at. Again, I can't comment on the accuracy of any of this. I can only comment on what I see here. I'm not an Apache expert, but again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record here. There's nice raised recessed details everywhere. Everything is sharp. Like if you scratch across this, like everything is very, very nicely molded. Now, the only thing I do have to comment on is if you look at the back side of these, if you do decide to leave one of the engines open, you're gonna have to do a little bit of filling in here because there are some ejector pin marks. Now, it does look like something fits over this, so you'd only have to clean up the ones on the edges most likely, but still, that's a little bit of a slight disappointment to see that. Again, on this side, some very light ones. See, these might, you might be able to get out with some light sanding. The good news is there's none on this side in that grid work. So that's not bad, but yeah. This piece looks like it's for the top of the tail boom, just like a cover of some kind. Again, raised details. Seriously, Kitty Hawk, well, they're not around anymore, but would have liked to see that on their Seahawk family or Blackhawk Seahawk family. Okay, we got this out of the way. And next up, we have the K-Sprue. The K-Sprue is interesting. It's actually, the color it's molded in is a little bit different than the other ones. I'm not sure if it was like a re-mold and slash retool or if there was a reason for that. But on here, you can see a lot of little miscellaneous pieces, detail pieces, like for the gun, the ammo feed chutes, some of the gun... Uh, kind of the, the the framework that makes it spin. Some of the wire cutters, the windshield wipers are really nicely molded. You can see that right there. I don't know what any of this stuff is. There's the gun. And then this is, I believe this is like the towel rack antenna that goes on the tail boom. This is that, uh, what you would use for a, for a folded rotor option. The blades just fade, fit, um, fit into these slots right here. This is another antenna of some sort. Look at the other side. Not really much to speak of here. So that's the case brew. And it also comes with some poly caps in the bag. Okay, next up we have the C sprue and the G sprue. So we'll look at C first. C is the tail pieces, actually no, the stub wing pieces. So obviously there's another hatch that goes on the fuselage, some little detail greeblies, look like some kind of jammer or some kind of little electronics box that goes in the fuselage. Holes are pre-drilled for pylons, so no need to worry about forgetting those. Nice beefy tab that slots into the fuselage and it looks like they slot into each other. So th this will be a very, very secure and strong assembly once it's done. The back side, not much to speak of here. These, not great because there's uh, ejector pin marks right there. So if you decide to leave this open, you're gonna have some filling to do. I'm starting to see a little bit of a trend here. This one also a couple near the top there, catch them in the light. So if you do decide to leave these open, you're gonna have a little work on your hands. But more, a couple of cover plates for the tail and then this is, I believe, for the rear of the engine housing. But there's that sprue, that's sprue C. Sprue G, jumping all over the place here. This is the ordnance sprue. So obviously you have Hellfires, rocket pods. I think there's, there's supposed to be stingers on here somewhere. These might be the stingers, those, those are the Hellfires. But you're gonna, if you're gonna be using these, you're gonna be building ordnance. They come in halves. Not really much to speak of here. I can't comment on how the shape of those Hellfires look. Maybe someone else will be able to comment. The rocket pods come, it looks like, with empty rockets. Like, normally don't the rockets stick out of here with like little, like little sharp tips. But the back looks like it's filled. So I don't know how that's going to work. Again, someone else can probably comment. These are the Hellfire racks right here. 
But yeah, so that is screw G. Next up, we have screws L and L. So this is a duplicate. Let's just take a look at one of them. And then on here, you have, again, being a helicopter kit, lots of random little details that go all over the place. So quick little kind of look around the sprue. Right here, you have a seat, wheels, seat right here, pylons, the exhausts, and then one half of the tail rotor and some other little strengtheners and little bracing and stuff like that. We'll take a look at the wheels. They do come with a flat spot. I guess the brake detail on the back is a little light. It will be interesting to see what aftermarket options do come out for that. The seat here is molded as one piece, or I, I guess the armored piece is molded as one piece. There's a big old ejector pin mark in the back, but that's going to be covered by the seat cushion material, I suppose. I'll be interested to see how these fit together. These are the exhausts. These look like they come in halves too, but hopefully there's not a giant seam to take care of. And then this little bracing, there's a little bit of a mold line on the side. Actually, I don't know if that's a mold line or if that's, that, that's a light. There's a little bit of a mold line on the side, but a little bit of sanding cleanup should get you there. So yeah, that is the sprue, sprue L, two of them, get those out of the way. Next up, we have another duplicate. So this is the H sprue. This is obviously the main rotor blade assembly. These are the, I believe these are something that the rotor blades fit into. I have to check on those. This is some more bracing for the rotor head, but the blades are not molded with any droop, it looks like. So, but there is a little bit of a, actually they may have a little bit of flex in them. So I don't know if that's normal, but someone else could probably tell me. They have raised detail on the ends. They have this little piece, which I'm gonna try not to break off when I'm building this. A little bit of raised detail here, some stiffeners that go through it. These are part of what holds the blades, I think. Oh, okay. So here's the, here's the rocket pod pieces that have like the rocket tips for different kinds of rockets, I'm guessing. So you have some shorter tips right there. You have some longer tips as well. Okay, so that's how that works. Now we know, but Here's another one of those hatches for the fuselage. Again, there's a giant ejector pin mark in the middle. So if you do want to leave that open and detail the inside, you're going to be doing some work. Again, two of these right here, you have obviously four blades. So get that out of the way. Next up, we have sprue F. This is for, oh, this, this also comes in the bag. This is not uh, meant to be on here, just broke off. This comes loose in the bag for you. So obviously main rotor head, details that go with the main rotor head, the big longbow radar here comes in several pieces. This is one of those pieces right here. Again, some raised details on this. A little bit of a mold piece that has to be cleaned up right there. Rotor head assembly right there. Followed by some other little braces. And I don't know what any of this stuff is, but it does look nice. Anyway, that is sprue F. Next up, we have sprue J. And then this piece, we'll get to that in a minute. I don't know what that looks like, sausages. So this is sprue J. Obviously, a lot of the cockpit pieces in here. We have... Moving around, these are the consoles. Take a look at those. And I like how they did, they did this separately, I guess. So it will make, if you do decide to use like a 3D cockpit, you, you don't have to be working in here to sand all this detail off. You can chop these off and then sand them flat, do your 3D cockpit and do and kind of get them together. What also intrigues me is if you do it this way, you can have potentially a 3D printer or a 3D designer, 3D design based company release detailed uh, consoles that can just glue in directly on this. And you just have to get the thickness off the side of this and 
just designed off of this base, then you need to do literally zero modification to drop them in here. So that'll be interesting to see if somebody does that. If anybody's listening here, maybe an idea for you. This is the back. I'm led to believe this is also missing those air conditioning vents that John spoke of. I don't know what these hoses are. Maybe they, these are what those air conditioning vents lead to, but maybe John will comment below and we'll see what he says. These, that's one of the instrument panels. Again, nice raised detail, should paint up nicely. We'll be very interested to see what the aftermarket graces us with to detail all this up. But yeah, that's, that's from Jay. I'm not entirely sure what these are. These are something, but it looks like they come in halves. So you'll be assembling two of them. And there's a bunch of raised rivets on these. I don't know what these do. If somebody knows, you can comment below. But that's that. And finally, we have these two sprues. So we have sprue A and sprue D. So we'll look at A first. This is the interior plate that the main rotor fits onto. So you'll be building the rotor, the supports, everything on top of this. This fits into the fuselage. I'm pretty sure there's some beefy locating tabs that this slots into. You can see here the tabs that fit into the side. And then this is a fairing that fits on the bottom of the fuselage. There's a cutout for it. This is the ends of the stub wings. These are some of those little open panels that you can have. It'll be really nice to see if somebody does aftermarket replacements of these that are just a drop fit. Because these are separate. Obviously, you just leave them out and then add the aftermarket piece in. Same with these. These are actually going to be interesting to see if someone does an aftermarket, like a 3D printed one with more cabling and other details. I don't know how accurate these are, but here's a close-up for someone who wishes, wishes to take a look. And then a close-up of one of the open panels. A lot of little switches and gizmology in there. That one. It's like something that fits in the bottom here. It's kind of empty at the bottom there. That's the fairing for the bottom of the fuselage. And then these are the tails, top and bottom halves. The static dischargers molded on are a little thick, I think. I would probably replace them with... I don't know, some, some wire, a couple of little toothbrush bristles maybe, but it's nice to see they included them and also tells you where they should be, but I suspect I'm gonna break those off at some point. There is a little bit of the ammo molded in right there. Okay, so that's sprue A. Next and certainly not least, we have sprue D, which includes a bunch of stuff that I don't understand. So we'll take a quick look around it. I think that's, yeah, I don't know what that is. So I think these are the exhausts. Maybe like you put the, together in halves and they fit inside the exhausts. But just a quick flyby. Those are the landing gear legs, I can tell from that. Nice, thick, D-shaped mounting pin that goes into the fuselage. We'll see how strong they are. They look pretty strong. Um, there's some parts for the sensor on the nose, I believe. Yeah, but these also have some ejector pins on the inside. So I'm kind of praying here that these are not as visible as I think they are. And then here's some, I guess these are the, the wire cutters for the landing gear, some of the braces for the landing gear. Yeah. Okay, so that's all the sprues. I am going to pull out my TACOM kit and grab a couple sprues that I can see like drastic differences in or compare some of the major pieces and then we'll round the video out with that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so we're back with a little bit of a very cursory comparison between the main Apache and the TACOM Apache. Again, I'm comparing the TACOM H64E versus the Ming H64D. So obviously there's gonna be some differences. It's two different variants of a helicopter, but I think the pieces and the parts and the things that we will compare are pretty generic through mm, these two kits. So we're just comparing kits, not comparing helicopters. First initial observation off the bat is these instructions suck. These instructions, while 
initially, on first glance, quite thorough, do not include any color callouts. So you will be going back and forth between references quite a lot to figure out what anything is painted. And that, depending on your level of skill and your level of familiarity with the airframe, could be a little bit of a pain in the butt. So that's the initial observation. The instructions are clear. So if I was to build this, there would be probably no issue. But if I wanted to actually build it and paint it, which obviously items like the cockpit you would like to build and paint before you put in the fuselage most likely, and then things like the engine transmission, the rotor housing and stuff like that, you definitely wanna be able to paint that before you assemble it. So you're gonna be going back and forth between references, probably comparing references at least to get an idea of what color something should be. Obviously, let's not kid ourselves here. We as modelers rarely follow the instructions 100%. They might suggest just green, whereas something needs to be olive green or sage green or light green or bright green or whatever green, but they might just point out green. But at least we know, okay, that's supposed to be green. We need to kind of reference our photos and look at it. But here it's more of a, you're kind of on your own to figure out what the colors are situation. Not necessarily a bad thing, just an observation, but yeah. Otherwise the instructions, perfectly fine. No other real comments here. Build sequence, very similar to the main kit. So if you look at the main instructions, you'll notice an initial immediately off the bat, they're, they're gonna be in color at least. So a little bit of a, uh, like denotation on what things should be. So obviously the cockpit showing some color callouts there at the top. And then these are helpful here showing the angle of certain things and then showing how pieces are added. Again, I think the, the kind of the solid works sort of CAD look is a little bit easier to follow than if you look at the TACOM instructions We'll look at something for the engines. If you look at this for like this sort of wireframe kind of look here is a little bit, I mean, if you compare the two side by side, this is what you get. But again, I can't really comment on which one's easier. It's kind of dependent on the person. There's not really a right or wrong here in this situation, but yeah, so here's a comparison on that. And then, yeah. So we'll come back with some parts here to take a look at okay. as well. And then here's another point of comparison. So this is from the main kit. This is the little baggie of decals, uh, photo etch and masks that you get. This is from the TACOM kit. You'll have to excuse the rustling plastic for a moment as I dump this out. But you can see in here, TACOM obviously includes for you a hell of a lot more photo etch as I drop it. And their photo etch is much more of this sort of very flexible, like paper thin plastic. Again, appreciated are all of these details, I think. So you have a lot of these photo etch vents, screens, little uh, caps for things. Um, I guess like access panels, you get some vents here. And then you get belts, obviously. This is for the airframe, some weapon stuff, sorry for the glare. But you get two sheets in here of uh, kind of airframe details. And you get another one of little, what look to be hinges on here. So you get, or, or these are for the blade fold kit. So the hinges for the blade fold kit right there. And then you get another sheet for the fins, I believe on the Hellfires. So those are nice. These are little pins for something that I don't know. And then you get a, little thing of 3D printed rocket heads, I believe. A little supplementary decal sheet. And then this is the main decal sheet. Not much really to speak of there, as well as a flexible vinyl ammo feed chute. This, I don't know how I feel about this. This stuff, I feel like never accepts paint properly. But again, check out uh, Simone in Italy. He has done a 3D printed detail set for the Canon and the kit in general for the cockpit as well. Shout out there check his stuff out. But, oh, and you get a length of this pretty stiff wire for something. But yeah, there's that. In the main kit, obviously much more simplified in terms of photo etch, you only get this one sheet and it's quite, that's 
you can see I dropped it and made a thud, but this is the only sheet that you get, and it's just the stiffener, it's on the fuselage, much more simplified uh, detail package there. But what I do really like is that they do give you these really nice masks in the kit. So you get the inside and the outside for all the glass, which should make your painting life a lot easier. But there's another difference. Okay, we're gonna put this stuff away and then we'll actually take a look at parts, I promise. Okay, and we're back with some parts. So we'll take a look at the fuselage halves first as that's an obvious point of comparison. So up top here, this one is the main fuselage. This one is TACOM. So if you take a look at them, obviously these are two for two different variants of helicopters. So they're similar enough, but you know, the, the H64D has a kind of a curved fuselage thing that goes down here. This one doesn't, but you can see that they are very, very similar. Also have these large, TACOM also has these large nubs for attaching the sponsons. Everything is sort of pretty much molded the same way. Some panels, Ming has chosen to do raised, whereas TACOM has chosen to do flush or recessed. But other than that, there's not a whole lot of difference. TACOM has decided to give you this as an open panel. Meng has it closed. But as far as rivet detail goes, take a look at those sort of side to side. Not a whole lot of difference there. Yeah, get a look at the front fuselage. Again, pretty similar there. So where some differences do arise is in these sponsons, potentially. So here we have both uh, sort of right side sponsons. TACOM is on the bottom. This is Meng up here. So Meng obviously has the, I guess the detail bits are a separate piece. They have to glue in here. It should make painting easier. And if an aftermarket manufacturer wants to come out with an aftermarket insert, that you just drop in, it'll be a lot easier. This, you're gonna have to gouge all this out, which is not gonna be fun. Also painting it, you're gonna have to get some get creative with some brushwork to get in there. If you close it, however, it doesn't matter. But you can see here, this piece here, TACOM gives you as photo etch, whereas Meng has it molded in. Again, the molded in mesh is really not bad. Throw a black wash in there and you should be okay. But I do appreciate that this is a photo etch piece on the TACOM kit. And also TACOM has this panel removed. I don't know if there's an insert for it, but should you wish to add something in there, it is open. Mang has it molded closed. But again, other than that, it's pretty much the exact same. No major details here. Also TACOM has the sort of the front combing piece as a separate piece, whereas on Mang it's molded on. Mang has this little sensor up here, or this little like nub as a separate piece as well. You glue on, TACOM has it molded in. So again, I don't know how accurate any of this is, but there it is. So next we'll take a look at perhaps something that I think is quite significant. So these are the two cockpit sprues. This is the TACOM sprue, and this is the Meng sprue right here. So what I really appreciate about the main cockpit is that the sort of the side consoles are molded separately. So that gives you more options in terms of detailing and aftermarket. So should you wish, wish to replace these, an aftermarket company could theoretically come out with these pieces, but just with more detail, the correct switches, better sort of relief on some of the molded buttons and such. And you could just drop them on to here, just glue them in. Straightforward. But on the TACOM cockpit, the side consoles are all molded in. And should you wish to do any detailing on that, you're going to have to be sanding and scraping in this tub here, which depending on your level of OCD is going to be a pain in the butt. Again, just two different approaches. The actual detail is quite similar as you can see i think i have this the wrong way around so the level of detail is quite similar on these but i think the aftermarket will provide much better pieces and 
the main kit is going to be a much better experience when you choose to add those. And then if we take a look at these rear sort of bulkheads side by side, I'm trying to find a way to do this. Um, you'll see that they look very, very similar. You have those molded hoses, have that circuit breaker, wires down the side. Actually, those two could essentially be the exact same piece. I won't go into why I think that's the case, but yeah, those are essentially the exact same piece. And then we'll take a look at the instrument panels. So there's the, there's one instrument panel. Let me see where I can find it on this sprue. So those are the two instrument panels right there. And then let's see, where's the other one there? So these two together, uh, there's gonna be no good way to show this, but there's one, this is, and then there's the other one. Again, those could essentially be the exact same piece. Yeah, we're not gonna talk about why that is. Anyway, so I have a couple more pieces that I wanna get over here and we'll take a look at, but uh, yeah, stand by. Okay, and then here is another point that I wish to call out. So this is the TACOM clear sprue. And then if we look at the canopy piece, the way that TACOM has this broken down is this middle section, sort of the overhead glass piece is one piece, whereas the sides are all separate. So this is the side that um, I guess doesn't open. So this side, you're gonna have to line up on the left side here, and then the right side pieces are separate. So if you choose to display those open, you can. Whereas on the main kit, the top section and the left section, so this piece, are molded as one. So this and this are molded together, and then only these two are separate. I think that's the better way to do it, just because it will help with alignment, and then anytime you're gluing near clear glass, it just always makes me nervous. It can be done carefully, but it's one of those if it can be molded together and not sacrifice any clarity or detail, then why not? It just eliminates a point of potential like issues. So personal preference, I like the way that Meng did it, but this again, you, you, like you'll fit this first and then fit this piece to that and then glue that together and then these two are separate. So if you choose to leave those open, you can open them. If you choose to close them, you can close them. And the actual clear parts quality is very comparable. I think if I had to call it, the Ming is a tiny, tiny bit clearer. But at that point, you're just really like grasping for a difference. I think they're pretty much similar. But just the way the parts break down is, I think the Ming is going to be a little bit easier. All right, and just a final call out here that I thought was interesting. So this is the TACOM Ordnance Sprue. You can see that it includes Hellfires and these Rocket Pods. Uh, very sort of standard Apache loadout. But what's interesting is for these Rocket Pods, TACOM has chosen to give you, obviously, the loaded tubes with the rocket sticking out. This, I believe, is just like a, like a flush fit. This is for an empty one, and this is the rear caps. This approach is is a little bit annoying because if you didn't want to paint these rockets, I think the rocket tips do get painted a different color. So that could be a little annoying. The way that Ming has it set up, so Ming has obviously more parts here, but you get the rocket bodies, or the rocket pod bodies, which are here. These are the rear caps there, again. And then this is the front cap, which is hollow on initial inspection. So if you want to leave it empty, it will be empty. And you can just leave it hollow like that. But if you choose to add the rockets, they are here. So you could paint these, you could paint this piece separately. And then I'm guessing that this piece will just slot into this piece here, something like that. So this, I guess, is, is a minor detail, but it's one of those little quality of life things that I think could save you some headache. Whether or not you use aftermarket ordnance, which many of us probably will, uh, that's up to you. But just as far as building out of the box, I think the way that Meng has it broken down is going to be a little bit more mm, streamlining to your workflow. All right, and that pretty much wraps up the what was supposed to be a quick look in the box 
of the Meng AH-64D Apache Longbow. Again, this is Meng's latest kit. We're doing this in August 2023, depending on when you're watching this video. I look forward to building this sometime soon. Uh, the ultimate plan is to build this, the Meng AH-64D, the TACOM AH-64E, as well as the TACOM AH-64 Seraph for the Israeli Air Force. Again, we took a couple of digs at Meng and at TACOM in this video in the comparisons, saying one's better than the other, one has ejector pin marks, another one does not. Again, both kits, fantastic kits. I'm sure they go together very well. Both are excellent representations of the Apache and we're thankful to have both. We're no longer dealing with whether or not we want to super detail or correct the ancient Kingnam kit or the Academy Rebox of said kit recently. So make no mistake, either of these kits, you're gonna be happy. You're gonna come out with a great looking Apache. The main kit, I suspect, is kind of geared more towards a casual builder uh, rather than a more super detail-oriented discerning like model maker. I don't know if that makes any sense, but the point is that the main kit sacrifices some detail like the lack of photo etch parts for molded in details for vents or molded in details for paneling. Is it a bad thing? I don't know. I personally appreciate the fact that Meng has been able to mold things on like vents, like details that TACOM has provided in photo etch and make them look good. Do they look as good as photo etch? I don't know, but that is for you to decide. Again, we'll be building all of these. Uh, I took some digs at the main kit also for having ejector pin marks in the engine bays, uh, but it's got an easier to detail cockpit with those separate side consoles. The TACOM kit is definitely a little bit more complex. Um, I think the cockpit layout is not ideal for super detailing, uh, but again, there's nothing wrong with it. In fact, I have just recently picked this up from the latest Sprue Brothers sale. And like I said before, we're gonna be building this. So anyway, look for more updates on all these kits on the channel. If you have any questions about this kit in particular or the TACOM kit, or are specifically curious about how this part on kit A and that part on kit B stack up, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. And if you're looking for Apache detail parts, I'm sure there's tons coming, but at the moment, check out Simone on Facebook. I think he's from Italy. I probably just butchered his name. I will leave a link for his profile below and you can check out his stuff. But either way, thanks for watching. And as always, if you like this video, please give us a like, a thumbs up, and also subscribe to the channel for more coming soon. Take care, bye.